Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on this gorgeous little water bottle cover bag if you like. Oh here we go there's a little footage there yeah she's a little tiny bit of a show off but this is the sort of thing that you will get towards the end of your bag. So you can see how um, long that is or how short that is on my body. Now just a heads up here I'm only five foot two so I'm fairly tiny and from the neck down to my hip I'm even shorter. <laughs> <laughs> so just a little heads up there and you actually can design your strap the way you would like to do it all right so we today used hobby cotton it's the oh, let's get a close up it's the eight slash eight which is kind of like an eight ply or a number three or a dk weight i find it a little bit more dense for a dk weight but it actually you could you could literally call it um, a very thin Aran weight if you like all right um, but it really is good for the water bottle uh, bag cover because it's nice and strong the thread yeah um, I used literally I ran out of <laughs> I had about 40 grams left from another project yeah and I thought 40 grams which was just over three quarters of a, of a skein, maybe more, even a little bit um, of yarn. It wasn't enough. OK, you would literally need for this particular size, um, because I give you two sizes throughout the tutorial. For this size, you will need one skein. OK, I used literally 50. What was it? 45 grams altogether. OK, um, and then I used 10 grams of the um, orange so literally I'm sorry <laughs> 55 grams altogether and 10 of those grams were the orange so when I say grams you're looking at one skein for the smaller bag and I'll explain that in a minute and you're looking at a quarter of a skein for the orange color all right when I say smaller bag this is suited to a 600 ml bottled water very tiny as you can see my hand almost goes around it so it's a relatively tiny bottle the other one that i say throughout the tutorial which you don't see me creating uh, that one i ask you to add another few stitches in uh, your beginning round and that will go for your 750 mil size bottle which is a relatively larger size all right but what you do when you get to the part where we've done our single crochet in the back loops to form that little ridge there try your bottle i think i tried it on quite a few times throughout this tutorial um, so try your bottle on what else will you need you will need a four millimeter size hook yes and you will need two stitch markers and you will need a sewing needle and you will definitely need a sewing needle and you will need a pair of scissors all right so there you go i'm not going to talk anymore but like anything else <laughs> our tutorials do go for a long time i'm extremely thorough and i do plenty of close-ups for you so there you go thank you for watching and enjoy creating your gorgeous water bottle cover bag good luck all Alrighty, guys we're going to start off by making a magic ring or a magic circle or a magic loop grabbing your tail end in front grabbing your working end and wrapping it around your fingers like so. That's three fingers there if that helps you. Grab your hook, pop it under the first loop, pull the back loop forward and up. Now when you let go, don't let go of anything really, but you take it off your hands, keeping everything in one place. So really don't let go, okay? And now you chain one and two, and you grab your stitch marker all right so grab your stitch marker and just pop it in the top two loops in the center here you're going to pop nine half double crochets so yarn over your hook in the center pull a loop through one two three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three loops on your hook the very first stitch is real tricky and then you can give that center a little tug and then do your next eight so yarn over your hook in the space pull a loop through one two three yarn over pull through all three loops on your hook so you've got one two three 
four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Your chain two will act as a tenth one. So you've got one, two, three. And you're counting these little Vs you see here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That was including your little chain stitch, yeah? Now, if you are working on your little thin bottle like this, stay where you are. If you are working on a 500ml bottle or a 750ml, which is relatively thick, look at the difference between them, okay? That's small and that's big, yeah? So if you're working on the bigger bottle, you need to do another two more half double crochets, all right? So I'm going to be working on the small bottle for this tutorial, but for anyone working on that larger bottle, do two more half double crochets. All right, once you've done your two, grab your little tail, give it a tug, nice and tight, and you're going to slip stitch into the top of that chain, oh, tight chain that Mary always does, um, with a stitch marker in it. So pull your loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook. Let's take out that stitch marker, just giving everything a little bit of a tug there you go. All right, from here we're going to do round two. Now round two, you are chaining one and two. Yet again, let's pop our stitch marker in the chain. And what you're doing is you're popping it through the top two loops, one on the bottom and two loops on the top, if that helps. Yeah. In the same stitch you are in, which is fairly tight, you're going to do one half double crochet, the same as what we were doing before. I'm just going to put one in there. Well, it's not too bad. The one I did before was really tight. <laughs> and there you go. And you do your normal half double crochet, like so. All right. Then, in each stitch in the round, you're doing two half double crochets in each stitch. Now, these are the little V's that you see right here. You can see that V is already filled up. So you've got to get into that V there don't miss it yeah and you go right into the stitch which is two loops on top and a little loop on the bottom pull that loop through and that's one and then you're doing two all right so it's two in each two in your next one and two all right so off you go popping two half double crochets in each stitch until you get to the end of the row and I'll pop this on fast for you. All right, so here I am at the end of the row. I've got one stitch left and that little tiny slip stitch. So we need to put two half doubles in there. One and two. Now, if you're crocheting for the smaller bottle, then you would have 20 stitches in the round. If you're crocheting for your larger bottle, you will have 24 stitches in the round. I had to you know, do my math there <laughs> because you started with 12 and we all started with 10. All right. So let's count them real quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you are counting these little V's, by the way. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And your chain right there is the 20th. All right. Or in your case, 24 if you're doing the larger bottle. All right. Okay. From here, what are we doing? We are slip stitching. Mm -hmm. To join like so and pull your loop through give it a tug taking out that stitch marker chain one two and oh <laughs> i was going to say keep going but no you have to pop your stitch marker in first always pop that stitch marker in just because it's easier to find your stitch at the end of the row Ooh, it was a bit tight that stitch marker 
all right in the same space you once again are popping another half double crochet right in that same stitch and that didn't go in the stitch let's try let's try that again <laughs> oh you like that right in the same stitch and there you go two there in your next stitch you are putting just one half double crochet okay two into the next one and two and one into your next and then two into the next one and two i can hope you can see that let's try that there that's better one in your next and two into your next one and two all right so super easy one two one two one two one two all the way until you get to the end of this row right here and you should end up with one space left and i'll meet you there and we'll talk about what we're going to do next Alrighty, guys what you should have left is one stitch there we're going to pop our last half double crochet in that stitch because you have two before and you have two that we did in your first one there yeah? so now we're going to slip stitch to join right in that stitch marker there <laughs> pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook just take out your stitch marker all right now if you had um if you are actually creating for the small bottle you should have 30 stitches in the round if you are creating for the larger bottle you should have 36 stitches in the round and we're all going to chain one i'm sorry and two <laughs> i can't count always two chain two in the beginning of our rounds before we start a change of pattern and then that changes again all right so now we're not going to increase anymore no we are going to actually put a half double crochet in every v you see in the round all right so yarn over your hook popping your half double crochet not in the same stitch but in your very next stitch there pull your loop through three loops yarn over pull through all three loops easy one and two and three and four and five it's super duper duper easy yeah so your job easy again is to just do a half double crochet in every stitch get to your very last stitch and i will meet you there once you're done Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of the row. I've got my last half double crochet, like so. And I'm going to slip stitch, mm, that tight stitch, to join. Let's take that stitch marker out, shall we? <laughs> I don't know, there's always one in every tutorial, isn't there? Um, okay, a nice tight stitching that Mary has. And you're going to slip stitch in that nice tight stitch. Pull your loop through. And there you go so what you have is this now it's starting to curl a tiny bit which is what we want but the major curl we're going to do now so we're going to have a change of pattern so you're going to chain one and you're going to pop a single crochet in back loops now now let me show you the loops of what you're looking at these are the two loops you've been putting your um, stitch in yeah this is called a front loop and this one here is called the back loop right there if you can see it there it is right there okay now that's the loop we are going to be crocheting in that one that one that one not this one but the one there all right so we're going to be putting a single crochet in the back loop now the first one is real tricky because we are in the stitch so it's going to be awfully difficult, but we're going to try it anyway. Now there it is, right there, at the back. That first one is even more tight for me, because yours truly crochets really tightly. But I'm kind of in the back loop. I'm going to pull that loop through, tighten it all up, yarn over your hook, and pull through two loops on your hook. And you're going to pop your stitch marker in. That was a bit of a trying <laughs> stitch for me. Oh it was very trying but the rest will be easy yeah there's your your two loops there the back loop right there single crochet all right 
same with your next one you're going into the back loop single crochet back loop and so on all the way across your row it's a very quick and easy stitch I find that if you're not careful you can accidentally do a slip stitch <laughs> which has happened okay with me in the past many times but you just keep going in the round like so yeah and you can see the little difference between the stitch yeah so what I'm going to do now it's going to pop this on fast for you and off you go doing your back loops only all the way until you get to the end of the row and I'll meet you there in just a moment Alrighty guys, so what you have, I'm getting all tangled here, is this right here. Let's turn it this way a little bit and you can actually see the little ridged line that you are forming. Now you won't notice that now, but if you face it a little bit like that in, it's already starting to curve. Grab your little doodah bottle and there you go. Alright, so that's curved, it's made your curve. Now I'm doing the one with the 30 stitches in the round, so I'll still have 30. If you have the 36, you're, oh, <laughs> without dropping the bottle, <laughs> your, um, your larger bottle should fit in your 36. Alright, so I don't think we need to try that on anymore. I think we're doing alright. Now let's do um, a slip stitch to join. And we are going to do a row of half double crochets, okay? But before we do, we still have one more stitch left, yes? Right there. Right there. And the one next to it's a slip stitch, so don't put it in there, yeah? And there you go. All right, so we're slipping into <laughs> the tight stitch right there. <laughs> You're fighting that stitch through the whole tutorial today, aren't I? <laughs> All right. So we're chaining one and two. Popping our stitch marker. I'll see how I left that nice and loose this time. <laughs> I don't want to fight with it. I don't want to fight with you anymore. No more fighting. Um, all right. Now you're popping a half double crochet in every stitch in the round. Now remember how we did our back loops. We'll find that most of those stitches will be curling backwards. Yeah. So you have to find them again. And what you're looking for is a little V. Now you know you're already in this V right here, so you don't need to be in there, but you need to be in the very next one. So yarn over your hook in that next V, pull a loop through, and you're doing your half double crochet. And into your next. And notice how I put it for, sort of push it forward a little bit so that I can find those two loops. If you don't push it forward, you might accidentally put it across the whole area and you don't want that you want to pop it through the half double stitch itself all right very easy this row you know how to do this because we've been doing half double crochets all the way across your rows okay so head off on your own do your half double crochet all the way across get to this last stitch and i'll meet you there once you're done And we're going to slip stitch to join like so taking out your stitch marker okay now you are chaining one and two pop your stitch marker back in there so we're going to be changing the pattern back to the half double crochets all right so half double crochet not in the same stitch you are in but in your very next stitch there and one and one in your next stitch and so on one and next very easy row this one you know what you're doing here so you are half doubling <laughs> if that's a word all the way across your row all right and your little tail end should be in the middle for now all right don't worry about the ends we'll look at those later all right so half double in every stitch get to your last stitch right here or the stitch just before your round ends and i'll meet you there once you're done all righty guys here we are at the end of this row as well all right so what are you gonna do 
a lip stitch right in there like so and pulling your loop through taking out your stitch marker guess what chain one and two you're going to do that row one more time all right so there you go half double in your first stitch oh, it's a little tight but it's there that's actually your second stitch if you classify your chains as your first yeah half in your next and your next and you know what you're doing next <laughs> that's what we'll call this line you know what you're doing this row sorry or round you know what you're doing do half doubles in the round get to your second last stitch or your last stitch right there and i'll meet you up once you're done all righty guys here we are at the end of this row one half double left and we're going to slip stitch in there get too excited because we are about to change the pattern take out your stitch marker all right big pattern change here completely we're going to work on double crochets yes but first we're going to chain three let's get a close up one two and three and we're going to pop our stitch marker in the top of that third chain not the second one, but the third one. Then we're going to chain one more. And in this round, that will be classified as a double crochet and a chain one. And then we're going to pop a double crochet in the same stitch. So yarn over your hook into the stitch, pull a loop through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through, two. Okay, yarn over. We've got two loops left you're pulling through the last two that is your first v stitch complete and now what you're going to do is you're going to skip one two and in that third stitch right there you're going to pop what we call the v stitch okay so one two and a double crochet in that third stitch so one double crochet pop your hook in pull a loop through three loops yarn over pull through two Yarn over, pull through the last two, chain one. That's the middle of your V stitch. Yarn over your hook, double crochet in the same stitch, like so. All right, and there's your two V stitches already done. All right, so you're skipping one, two, jump into the third with your V stitch, which is a double crochet, chain one and a double crochet that's it that's it for the row one two third v stitch all right a very simple pattern uh, works up very quickly i love the v stitch as my regulars would know if you're joining us new firstly welcome one two and into the third uh, you wouldn't know this but the v stitch is actually one of my favorite stitches apart from double crochets of course in general one, two, jump into your third with your V-stitch. But the V-stitch is one of my favourite stitches to work with. All right, just a bit of trivia there about me. One, two, jump into your third with a V. All right, I'm not even going to pop this on fast. Yes, I am in a minute <laughs> because I just split the stitch. And I will meet you at the end of the row. One, two, and into your third with your V. And off we go. The last double crochet right there all right and now uh, what we should all have is one two stitches left now those of you who are doing uh, 36 stitches you will still end up with two stitches left now if you haven't ended up with two stitches then you've made an error somewhere in the count all right so go back and check your work but otherwise for the rest of us who all should have our two stitches left we're going to skip them and slip stitch into the stitch with our stitch marker in like so taking out that stitch marker and what you have is your first row or round i should say of v stitching now this this will close up a little bit as you go along but don't stress too much it will stretch okay eventually it will stretch on your bottle so just be wary of that okay now you're going to pull up a loop literally cut your work yeah 
you can carry it up if you like but I find it leaves very messy let me show you the carry up style that I used um, it's really quite messy okay I find it very very messy you can see it on the sides that I've carried up so I would actually in your case cut it weave it in start your new color okay which is what we're going to do right now and what we're going to do with our new color we're going to start it right in the middle mm, let's get a close-up right in the middle of the slip stitch section that we just worked into so you're popping your hook in the middle of that first V that you made all right grabbing your new color get excited and just pull that loop through I said get excited on purpose because let's pass that little tail forward because after I show you this round and your next round you'll know exactly what to do okay for the rest of the well most of the tutorial anyway so yarn over your hook pull through once twice and three times and guess what you're doing you're popping your stitch marker in there like so chaining one again remember at the beginning of the row you are always going to chain one after you put your stitch marker in and now you're going to put a double crochet in the same space and that will be classified as your first V all right and now what you're going to do easy job you're going to be putting a V stitch inside every V stitch so hop in there with a double crochet in the very next one chain one and double crochet now if you really wanted to focus on where you're putting it it's always where that chain stitch is not in the space before the chain space but the actual chain space so you're skipping that tiny little space and you're jumping into the big space which is called a v stitch space with your v stitch super duper easy yeah super duper whoops i nearly forgot the chain <laughs> don't forget the chain in the middle of your v stitch yeah i did actually forget because i'm working on a v stitch without the chains at the moment so it's easy for me to forget all right so i want you to continue into that round get to your very last two stitches here and i'll meet you there once you're done oh actually your last v stitch and i'll meet you there once you're done Alrighty guys, here I am at the end of the row. I've got my last V stitch there. So we're going to pop our last V stitch in there like so. Yes, and then you're going to slip stitch into the stitch with your stitch marker in it, pulling up a loop, giving your work a cut. Alright, just grab your scissors, give it a cut, and that's the end of that tail all right now what are you going to do is you're going to grab oh take out that stitch marker for starters <laughs> hello um just pop all your tails in the middle for now we're going to work on those later but just pop them in the middle for now and there's your um very next v that you've got grabbing your green again oh, i've just dropped out a bit <laughs> let's try that again all right there we go so grab your green Passing the tail, yes, this is really close, isn't it, guys? Sorry, I don't want it too close. Start getting all dizzy on me. <laughs> Can't have your fainting now. All right, so there we go. Chain one, two, and three. And what are you going to do? You're going to pop your stitch marker in there. And guess what? This row is exactly the same. Chain one, double crochet over. You notice how I'm crocheting over the tail. It doesn't matter anyway because we're going to be pushing those tails in and weaving them on the inside of your work there's going to be a few tails sorry guys well, that's what it's all about when you're color changing <laughs> jump into your next v with a you guessed it v stitch yes very very basic row this one all right head off on your own complete this row and i will meet you back here once you're done right there once you're done Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of the row. I've completed my last V stitch there and I'm going to slip stitch right into the stitch with a stitch marker in it and get too excited because we are going to have some instructions now. Alright, I'm just going to pull up a loop. You don't need to. Okay, I just want to show you what you need to do. 
the basic rule is to repeat these last two rows and that's too far yeah uh, for another four times or another eight rows if you will so in other words you just need four sets you need one one two three four so you need four sets of those that color combination and I'll meet you back here once you're done Alrighty guys, what you should have is this. Now it does look like it's tightened up a little. Don't worry, this will stretch. Trust me. I've done these before. <laughs> well, no, not exactly. I've done other things before and they do stretch. Especially when you are having a heavy bottle hanging in them, they will stretch. Alright, so what I want you to do is slip stitch <laughs> into the stitch with your stitch marker in it like so. Yes, that actually worked. It's not too bad. Take out your stitch marker. Yeah. And just place it in your loop. Like so. That'll just stop it from coming undone. While we do this. The dreaded task of weaving in all these ends. We're only going to weave in one end. So turn your work inside out. I'm sorry, we'll weave in two ends. We'll weave one in the middle right down the bottom this tail that you had here I hope you didn't cut that after you did your circle you really need to weave that bottom end indefinitely because this one here will come undone I'm telling you now don't let anybody say to you that it won't come undone it's a little awkward we should have probably weaved them in a little earlier it's a little awkward to weave these ends in but what you do is actually just oh I'm so far away sorry you're just splitting your yarn okay and because this is cotton it's so hard to weave in isn't it don't you love it don't you love it all right but you do need to weave it in it's you know I'm serious when I say it can come undone because it will so keep weaving that in as best you can now you can see why I asked you to put your stitch marker in because this is going to be turning around a lot this is going to be pulling and tugging and all sorts of weird things so your tail or your end will come undone there all right so once you go one way a little bit you don't have to do a whole lot okay go back again in the other direction or go back in the other direction again <laughs> I don't know which English school I went to, but anyway, go back in the other direction. Hello, go back in the other direction again. <laughs> Wake up, Mary. All right, I think that's enough. As long as you've weaved it in enough times for it to not come out. Yeah, yeah, there we go. All gone. Very good, very good. So let's try another knot. Um, let's go for one that's not. There you go. Let's go for one of these ones that kind of is like sitting on the edge there all right so we're going to grab one of those they, they've, there's actually nowhere for it to go so it's kind of just sitting loose yeah we're going to grab one of those okay here we go so re-thread your needle as best you can oh, I'm not really good at this the threading stuff all right so you can pop your fingers in your work for this let's get a nice close-up for you all right, so where your little tail end is, it's here. You can either go back in there or you can go in under here. And I would actually suggest, because your tail kind of points that way, I would suggest going down that way. Plus, you need to weave this one in on this way. All right, so your orange right here or whichever one you're using, just grab a little bit of a thread. This is the inside of your work, by the way, so no one's going to see it much. And just split that a little bit. You won't see it at all, actually, with the way we weave in here. Oh, I'm pulling it, wondering why it's not working. It's already gone through. <laughs> Hello. Um, all right. And then you are going to weave it in inside your stitches of your green. But I want you to make sure you can't see the needle from the front right there because your orange will show if you can see the needle from the front and you don't want that it's so hard to weave in cotton i'm sorry guys about this but it's a part of it all really isn't it 
<laughs> especially this particular cotton. It's rather dense, very thick, yeah? And we're going to go back in the other direction like so, making sure you can't see the needle from the front. And I know you can't because it's gone through a whole lot of thickness. And that's it. You're only going to do it twice. You don't have to do it a lot, really. Don't pull it too tight because once you do this, it's going to come out. All right, so just being very careful not to pull it too tight. Give it a cut. And then you're going to weave in all these umpteen billion ends as well. All these maz gazillion, bazillion ends. I don't even know if they're real words, all right? So we're going to push our bottle um, holder through. Pretend like we've weaved in our 6.5 million <laughs> ends. Oh, I just can't get it right today. Can I look how many, look how many ends I have? Well, I'm sure you've got the same a lot of amount of ends. This is just not working for me. Stop, stop. Get in there. <laughs> Do as you're told. All right. So I'm so naughty, aren't I? All right. So we're here. Take out your stitch marker. We are doing a change of pattern. Get excited cause, because this is the very, very end. Oh, very exciting. Well, almost. Not really. We still need to do a strap. Yeah. All right. So chain one. Uh, and two, like so, because we are reverting back to our half double crochet rows now. Yay. All right. So you've got your two chains there. In every space you come to, you're doing a half double crochet. In every stitch you come to, you're doing a half double crochet. So there's your chain space. You're going to do a half double crochet right into the space one there then you've got this one stitch from the double crochet and the other double crochet so you've got one and two stitches yeah so you're going to do one in your first stitch or it should be your last stitch of that v stitch and one in your first stitch of the v stitch and then one in the chain space so if you want to remember what you're doing, it's one half double crochet, two half double crochet, and one in the space. One and two and one in the space. Easy, yeah? One in your stitch, one in your next stitch, one in your space. One in your stitch, one in your next stitch, and you guess it, one in the space. I'm going to pop this on fast for you because I think you know what, you, what you're doing. She says that she almost made a mistake. <laughs> and I will see you at the end of this row. And off we go. And two. And we're on our last V here, one in the space. But before you go on, you've got your chain three, I'm sorry, your chain two on top of the chain three from your previous round. You still need to put a half double crochet in this stitch right here. So half double in there, like so. Before you slip stitch, count your stitches. Those of you who had 30 should have 30 now. And those of you who had 36 should have 36 now. And off we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. And your stitch marker stitches is your 30 or 36 if you've got 36 stitches. All right, so it should all add up. If it doesn't add up, you've gone wrong somewhere. All right, so now what you're doing, basically, are very easy. I think I've done one too tight. Yes, let's take that undone. Slip stitch at the top of the stitch with your stitch marker in it. Hello. <laughs> so slip stitch into, oh, it's not going to do it for me, is it? Really, really tight. Of course, being the last stitch of the whole round, it has to be in really tight, doesn't it? Literally the last stitch of the whole work. And there you go. 
<laughs> don't you love it all right so now what we're going to do is we are going to form our handles but before we do yeah you're going to try it you're going to try it now you're going to find it's a little bit tight for your bottle but that will oh that didn't, wasn't too bad but that will actually um loosen up all right and i can't get it out any further but there you go all right so that's how high up mine goes it's not bad it's pretty high can i do this a little bit <laughs> there you go i'll lift it up a little bit and bring that out oh it's not going to work how's that can we get the lighting to work no that's not going to work but you can you can see it yeah you can see how high up it goes all right this is my my water bottle <laughs> my bottle um so there you go now we're going to form the handles get excited guys get excited all right so the way it works is with your handles you're going to use the same thread that we're using we're going to go up and about on the other side now you just need to do the middle of one side and the middle of the other and you know what it doesn't even have to be exactly in the middle all right you, as long as you have your piece nice and flat you really should count right <laughs> but it doesn't matter all you're doing is chaining let's get a close-up leaving your work nice and flat for now chaining one but in that same stitch right there we're going to pop a single crochet and a single crochet is popping your hook in the stitch pull a loop through Ooh, tight stitch there like so two loops on your hook yarn over pull through two grab your stitch marker like so so single in your very next V which is right there pop your hook in pull your loop through two loops on your hook yarn over pull through two that's your second single you're going to do a third one in one in the next that is and a fourth one one in your very next so you've worked on four single crochets across now we are going to chain one flip our work and we're going to work along these four single crochets for a very long time <laughs> for about a week no not really <laughs> exaggerating a little bit single in your first I'm so naughty pull that loop through a grab your little stitch marker Rooney like so pop her in there yes and then you are single crocheting one two and there's your third one. I knew it was going to be really tight. <laughs> Let's take that out. I think the next row will be all right. It's just that very first stitch, the initial stitch. And there you go. Perfect. Chain one. What are you going to do? Flip your work. And work along these stitches here. Single in your first. Like so. Popping your hook. I'm sorry. Popping your stitch right hello it's too late in the day for me guys i'm ready for bed um <laughs> single in there all right and single across your row and you know what you're doing now two three and in that very last stitch four i think you're getting the picture take out your stitch marker yeah chain on flip your work and off you go single in your first pop your stitch marker in there single in your second single in your third and single in your fourth chain one get ready for some instructions oh my little balls rolling all over the place hello <laughs> so get ready for instructions what you need to do is flip your work yet again all right so what we're going to do from here is you're going to keep going in that manner all the way around until you get to the other side all right i'm going to do pretty much to suit my body 114 rows okay now that's how many i'm going to do don't forget i'm only five foot two <laughs> so i'm tiny but what i want you for you to do is do as many rows as i'm doing when you get to your 114 try it on and we'll see how we go there if you need another few more rows then go ahead and do a few more rows regardless let's just keep going get to the amount that you would like measure it over your shoulder to the length that you would like don't make it too low because your bottle will stretch the bag a little bit 
the weight of your bottle will stretch it a little bit, okay? So don't make it too low, but just low enough for you not to knock your arms when you're walking, yeah? All right, so go ahead, do your rows, and I'll meet you back here once you're done. Alrighty guys, here I am at the end of my rows. Now just um, focus on this bit of, oh here we go, <laughs> this little bit of footage right here and it actually shows you how long mine is. Now once we finish putting a little border row across it, uh, it will tighten up a little bit but notice the stretch in that bag, it's stretching quite a bit there. Alright, so your bag will actually stretch. Now I did 114 rows that is for the size that you saw in that video. Oh, there it is right there again. Um, that's for that size there. If you want yours to be longer, add another 10 rows or even another 20 rows. If you're like six foot two, you want to have a bit more than what I've got there, yeah? So you can add another 10 or another 20 rows. In the meantime, for the rest of us, we're going to get on with um, doing the opposite side. Now, how do we look for the opposite side? Well, honestly, I played like this. I kind of measured it up like this, got as close to the center as I could, and then I think I counted six across this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, and I popped six, a stitch marker there. It split my yarn a bit, but it's there. Then I did the same here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, Five and six and so if we started right there it'd be one two three and four which is what we have here all right so now what I want you to do once you place your stitch markers I'm going to fix this one because I don't want it to split when I'm working with it okay once you place your stitch marker just markers just straighten this up like that like so now I ran out of yarn at just the very last minute don't you love it don't you love it all right so I've straightened it up so that should lay flat like that yes now what I want you to do turn it around this way because we finished right here let's get a close-up this is the last row that I finished on yeah if you haven't finished on this row and you're on the other side just just do one more across. This is not going to hurt by one row, yeah? And you're going to place your hook in the first stitch of this side. Lift up your piece of work. Place it in the first stitch of your stitch marker there. You can take that stitch marker out. Yeah. Then you're going to grab this little guy here. You're going to pull the loop through like so, pull it through the stitch on your strap and pull it through to the loop you are in or that's on your hook. Yeah, then you're going to go straight into the other stitch and to the opposite stitch on the other side, pull it through both those uh, parts of your work and the loop on your hook. Then you're doing one more there, pull the loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook. I've still got that little bit to go. It's the last one too. Okay. <laughs> and pop it in the next stitch, your last stitch, into the last stitch on the opposite side. Getting rid of that stitch mark. I'm really sorry I'm struggling here, guys, with this last minute thread here. <laughs> Don't you love it? Okay. Pull the loop through. And pull it through to the loop on your hook as well. Now pull a loop through. This you're going to have to weave in in a minute, right? But I would leave it there for a minute. What I want you to do, the stitch just before, you're in that stitch there. The stitch just before it, pop your hook in, right? Grabbing a new thread. Bring your little tail end forward, yeah. Chain one, single crochet in the same stitch, like so. Grabbing your tail, passing it in. Grabbing that tail, passing it in, yes. Now, you're going to jump into the stitch that has 
your first stitch there. Doing a single crochet over everything, all tails, everything. One. Then you're going to skip those um, seam line, if you will, and jump straight into the space after the seam line with a single crochet. Then in every space you come to, let's move this out the way so you can see, you're going to pop a single crochet. It's super duper easy, right? This is, look, we're getting into home stretch, guys. This is it. This will actually secure your bag so it doesn't stretch too much. Look, it is going to stretch. There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> but this single crochet row on both sides will stop your bag from stretching. So what I want you to do, so you don't sit here and watch me, you're going to pop your stitch marker right on the opposite side of this piece. So bring it out and go all the way around to the opposite side right here. There's your opposite side. It's maybe the stitch before it. It doesn't matter. When we get there, you'll see. So just keep going in that manner all the way down this side, right here, right here, and get to maybe the stitch before your seam line. And I'll meet you there once you're done. Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of the row. And I have a single crochet before my stitch marker. And we'll do that one right there. All right, there's the stitch marker right there. Now, if you remember correctly, it's a little bit confusing here because this is the last row down here. If you remember correctly on the other side, we put a single crochet in that next stitch opposite. And then we put one in the same stitch our last row is crocheted into. All right, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Take out your stitch marker for now. Give you a nice close up so you can see that particular area. All right, so that is the row that we started crocheting our um, handle. Yeah, so we're going to single crochet into the stitch before the row, right there, which is a lot easier to see this side, which is good. And there's the stitches. That stitch right there is where our stitches are in. You're still going to single crochet in there. And that is what will really tighten up that area and make it nice and solid. Then we're going to single crochet all the way across the row. Now, if you remember correctly, let's bring that out a little bit. I didn't put a stitch marker in that first stitch. So when we get close to it, I'll show you what we're doing. But single crochet across. Very, very easy. Don't do these single crochets too tightly. Keep them loose. Otherwise, you won't be able to get your bottle through. Yeah. So keep them nice and loose, loosey-goosey, if that's the word we can use. All right, like that, all the way across. And let's get a close-up because I can see the last two stitches there. Single in that second last. Single in your last right there. And you can actually see the next stitch, the very first stitch we made, which is there, even though we don't have the stitch marker, naughty me. Single crochet there. When you look at this work here, you kind of see a little loop here, down here. Don't pop your hook in there. We are doing a slip stitch right into that very first single crochet. So pop your hook in that single crochet, pull a loop through, just tighten it up a bit and pull that loop through like so. Chain one or pulling up a loop as it's known as. Giving it a cut, make sure it's correct. <laughs> before you do that sorry I should have mentioned that earlier then we're gonna flip our bag guess what you have the other side to do all right so let's get a close-up none of this side has been done at all so um this oh, I don't need a stitch marker hello wake up Mary <laughs> this is where we started on the opposite side it is the stitch there before the seam line right there so popping your hook in that stitch yeah. Grabbing your thread. Get excited, guys. This is it. Get excited. Sorry. Grab your thread, pull it through the loop like so. No knots or anything because we're going to pass that forward, the tail end, and we're going to chain one and do a single crochet in the same stitch like so. You've got the two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. This time, Naughty Mary is not going to forget <laughs> to pop the stitch marker in there like so. You're going to work over this tail a little bit, but don't worry too much about it yet. 
And if you like, you don't even have to do that. We can actually sew that in at the end. In fact, we're going to sew that one in once we're done, all right? So I can show you exactly what we're doing. Now, remember, that's where our seam line is right there, yeah? So we're going to pop our single crochet, pop it in the seam line stitch where you first started. This is a little bit tricky. It's a little bit tight. And you're going to do a single crochet, yeah? Then you skip that seam line right there, you skip that, and you jump into the next space right there. Fairly tight, this one, yeah? Because that's our very first one that we started off with. Single into your next, and into your next. Remember what we did before with the other side? Too super duper easy. I get very sing-songy at the end of a tutorial don't you know they're saying stop singing okay so what you want to do here is continue in that manner all the way across all the way across and then you want to grab your stitch marker and pop it in I don't know the stitch before that little seam line right there okay so go ahead do that part there and I'll meet you up once you're done and we'll finalize our bag Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of the row. Now, uh, okay, we've got a single crochet just before the stitch marker. Yeah. Now I placed a stitch marker in the stitch before the seam line. Okay, so we're going to take that stitch marker out. Alright. And single crochet in the stitch before the seam line. Okay, if you're not there, get there now. Right. Now there's the seam line. We're going to do a single crochet in the same stitch as the seam line. Not the seam line itself, but in the stitch just after it, like so. And easy part, guys, easy be breezy, one single crochet all the way across your piece. Oops, make it loosely. Sorry, guys, I just realised I'm going very tight. <laughs> I, I do get really tight when I'm on a home stretch. This is the home. This this is it. <laughs> this is it. Oops, let's get that out of the way. So you can see we're almost there. There's our stitch marker. We're nearly there. Get excited. Let me straighten up the stitch marker a little bit. Oh, that didn't work. That's better. Okay, I've got two single crochets left. One and two. All right. So there's your stitch marker. Remember before we were trying to get into the stitch and I said, there's that little chain you don't get into. Well, there it is. And that's a stitch we need to slip stitch into. Pop your hook in the stitch. Pull a loop through. You can take that stitch marker out if you like. All right. And pull that loop through to the loop on your hook. Guys, check your work before doing this. Pulling up your loop. I've left a long tail just in case I've made a mistake, which I haven't. Or well, I might have. <laughs> As you do. All right. You're done, guys. That's it. But just quickly, so that you know what we're doing with our ends. We just finished off right here, okay? That one there, remember that one there I said before, you know, I'll, you don't have to crochet over it and I'll show you how to weave that end. Well, we're going to do that quickly now. It'll take no more than, I don't know, 20 minutes. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it won't take that long. I'm just, how naughty am I? Okay, it'll take no more than a minute or so, all right? So these are the stitches. Oh, let's get a close up. These are the stitches that you actually crocheted over, right? So your job is to actually place your needle in and under those stitches. Now I wouldn't go too far up. I'd more if anything, I'd go across this way, but that's okay. Going up is okay. Oh, making sure you can't see the needle from the front. Well, I get so used to doing that that I just assume it's not going to happen. It can happen even to me. Yeah, stranger things have happened. Anyway, so then you go back in that same direction that you came from, but see how you're in this stitch here? Jump over it. Either split the stitch or go into the very next stitch, and I would suggest doing that with this because it's cotton. Okay, and cotton can be hard to deal with. It really can. I'm struggling to get the needle through. But there you go. I've gone back in that direction, checking the front so you can't see the needle. Yeah. And then, let's bring it out a little bit. And then just pulling that needle through and it's going to be very tight. Now you can go further in and out, deeper in if you like, two or three times. 
I'm not going to fuss because this yarn, this thread is really, really thick and it's staying in. That's not going to come out at all. Okay, that's that one there. But just quickly wanted to show you your very last stitch. A lot of people have problems with this last stitch. And even looking at it, I think I will have problems too. All right. So if you wanted to, you could have taken that knot undone. There is another way of doing it, but I find that way really worries me. I feel like it's going to come undone. So don't do that if you don't want to, like me, because I'm very fussy. All right. That knot can be hidden if you know, like if you have a little bit of a, I don't know how to do it, bit of a trick. So you just give that work a good stretch, yeah? Then when you do the stretch, your knot is kind of sitting at the back of your work. So grab your needle and just slip it under the back of like a post, it's kind of like a post. So pop it there and you're pulling it through. Now, if you look at the front, you can see the knot a little bit, but not a lot. Like it's not extremely noticeable from far away, can you tell? You can tell it's a little bit darker than the rest of the work, but it's not completely visible, is it? Yeah, so I would prefer doing that than any other way. So while you're here, you can actually start weaving in, in and under some stitches anywhere you want to go, okay? Anyway, I think that went through a bit too thick for me and I can actually see the needle, not there because that's normal, but under in the corner there. And that's how fussy I am. I will take that needle out and I will pull it back in the other way and you can't see it anymore. And you can see it through the gaps, that's normal. All right, but that's, you can't do that much about that. <laughs> and it's going to hide anyway. All right, there. And then you go back in that other direction. Again, you can split the yarn like some of it's already split. So I'm just going to jump into the, the same split, but in a different area of that split. And as you can see, even now, I'm actually splitting yarn to weave that in. Absolute no-no in crochet. <laughs> it really is. And let's, oh, it's really close, isn't it? And let's just pull that through there. And I think that's plenty. Seriously, that is plenty, guys. That is all you need to do for the rest of your little baggie let's put our little bottle in oh let's bring that out let's put our little bottle in hopefully i didn't tighten it up too much with a single crochet i did a little bit i can feel it it's not that bad not that bad all right there we go Ta-da! and i don't know if you can see that i'm gonna lift the frame up a little bit i'm not going to worry too much about it because you can see it right here oh look there it is <laughs> <laughs> so there is your bag check that out is it not super divine not super divine i love 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 and there you go all right so we're going to take our bottle out and remember guys to weave in you've got a, a gazillion ends to weave in on the inside you didn't see that um so you can turn your bag inside out if you haven't weaved them in go ahead and do that now and if you don't have any ends to weave in yay lucky you <laughs> All I can say is enjoy your water bottle cover bag. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and do all the wonderful things that you guys, well, pretty much already do for me. And thank you so much again for all your support on our lives as well. At 4 p.m. Wednesday afternoons and 10 a.m. Saturday morning, Melbourne, Australia time. And I will see you there soon. <laughs> Ciao for now.